Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats video for Mythic Drestagath. In this video we'll cover all you need to know to take on this Mythic boss. Keep in mind that the strategy that we're going to share with you is based on early progression. By now people have a lot more gear, but the only thing that really changes on this fight is the encounter length. We will explain how you would do this encounter all the way until the boss enrages, but realistically you should kill the boss one or two add waves earlier than that. Also, if you prefer reading your guides, we do have a written version available on Wowhead, which you can check out, the link to which is in the description box. Without further ado, let's get started. There are not any significant mythic changes on this fight as far as mechanics go. The only thing you need to keep in mind really is that each appendage you kill will drop 4 Void Infused Ikers, and whenever a player picks them up, they can damage the boss for 30 seconds, and then after that they can't pick up another one for 1.3 minutes. For Mythic, the idea of rolling stacks of dismemberment is also kind of important, because by rolling stacks or triggering stacks of dismemberment on the boss at specific times, will allow the boss to cast Throws of Agony at times where you want it to, rather than times where it's kind of dangerous for the raid and you might get a bad overlap, and just instantly wipe. Rather than giving you an abstract overview of the strategy, I will walk you through our very first kill and exactly how we approach this encounter. And keep in mind that damage values were a lot lower when we killed it for the first time, so you should have an easier time with this. On pull, you will have two eyes of Drestagath up. You want to kill one of them as fast as possible, and then after it dies, your, all your DPS can swap to the second one. This is just so you don't roll those stacks of dismemberment. Of these first two eyes, your burstiest classes should pick up. Fire mages, warlocks, any class who has really good boss damage should pick up uh, debuffs to be able to damage the boss. And then as soon as the first eye dies um, and the tentacle is about to spawn, you can use bloodlust. And all your DPS who have debuffs should be hitting the boss, and all your DPS who don't have debuffs should be moving into that tentacle and nuking it down. So right after the tentacle dies, all your DPS should rotate to the eye. At this point, you should have a few melee DPS assigned to picking up those um, Ikers from the tentacle and start hitting the boss. But then as soon as the eye dies, this is where you will trigger your first Throws of Agony. So at this point, Pretty much all your DPS are hitting the boss. The ranged DPS who picked up at the beginning, their debuffs will have run out at this point, so they can all focus their attention on the maw that is up in the far side of the room and wait out this Throws of Agony. As soon as the Throws of Agony is over, the whole raid can rotate into this tentacle and start damaging it. This tentacle gets debuffed um, and it should die fairly quickly. And then right after it dies, um, again, if you still have a few people who haven't picked up, this is where they can pick up and hit the boss a few times. But these people will typically not do much damage to the boss. So after the tentacle dies, you rotate to the last remaining tentacle and try to kill it. If your DPS is fairly high, you should be able to kill this tentacle before the next wave spawns. But since we did this very early on in progression or early on when the raid came out, we didn't have the damage for it yet. So as soon as the second wave spawned, we just left that tentacle up and we focused all of our attention on this double maw spawn that's right next to the boss. So your tank should be able to get a debuff on both of them and you want to cleave these down simultaneously. So you want both of them to die exactly at the same time to minimize the amount of roll you get on the dismemberment stack so you minimize the amount of energy the boss gains from killing them. As soon as those two maws die, the boss should reach full energy and trigger its second throws of the encounter. Um, and at this point, all your DPS should have either picked up. This is where the first round of people should be able to pick up debuffs again. Um, and then everyone without debuffs should rotate to the back of the room and start damaging the eye and the tentacle. You can go about killing those two um, either way. You can either kill them at the exact same time like you did with the double maws, or you can nuke down the tentacle and then nuke down the eye, or vice versa. But the important thing is not to roll your stacks too much when it comes to those two. So at this point there will be only one appendage left, um, and your melee DPS should be picking up from the tentacle that you just killed. 
and hitting the boss as they rotate to the back of the room. And as everyone gets to the back of the room, wave three should spawn and your tanks should be able to get a debuff on both of the maws. Um, or if you're kind of ahead of the timer, then just nuke down the remaining maw and uh, kill them individually whenever they spawn. So again, on these two, you either want to kill them exactly at the same time or you want to kill them perfectly staggered to make sure you're not rolling the debuff. Um, in our video here, you can see that we kill them exactly at the same time. So after those two die, here people don't really pick up because there's just so many things up. Uh, the entire raid again rotates clockwise to this triple stack. And in this triple stack, uh, we start by killing the Eye of Drestagat, and we do get an Entropic Crash here. Um, so everyone just needs to make sure they move out of it. So you kill the Eye of Drestagath, then the Tentacle, and then the remaining add that was in the triple stack, and you keep rotating clock in a clockwise motion around the room as more adds spawn. So as you can see here, we kill Tentacle, and then we kill the last remaining Eye, and everyone just focuses their attention on the boss, picks up debuffs. This is a great time to pick up debuffs because there's nothing else happening. So you just deal damage to the boss. The remaining eye in the back, um, if your multi-daughters can kill it, then they can go ahead and do that. But at this point, we didn't have the damage for it, so we just opted to kill it in the next wave of adds. So right here, the next wave spawns. And again, here we get an eye and a mod that are next to each other, and these are able to get double debuffed. So your DPS should be hitting both of these and cleaving them down equally um, and making sure that they die at the same time. To not roll the stacks. As soon as those two die, the boss will trigger its next throws of agony, and the whole raid needs to rotate into the tentacle and use some sort of healing cooldown and personals to live through that throws while DPSing down the tentacle. At this point, you really can't afford any downtime to just wait around for the throws to be over before moving in and killing the tentacle. After tentacle dies, you can rotate uh, clockwise again and kill the eye followed by the tentacle that's all the way in the back of the room. So with this tentacle, there's a pretty specific timing that you want to hit. You want to kill it before it gets its uh, next AoE slam, because if you get that, um, you're most likely going to lose a lot of DPS and you're slightly behind. So ideally, you finish it off before it does its AoE and you're able to start damaging everything and set up for the next wave. As this next wave spawns, then Maw is still alive, but we pretty much just multi-dot it. Um, don't worry about it too much. It should die fairly early on in this wave, but most of the focus and the DPS is going into this Eye of Jetstagath. Normally, with the amount of damage your raid will be doing nowadays, that Maw of Jetstagath that's still up at this point should be long dead. But um, for us, that was still alive whenever we killed this boss, so we opted to kill both of those, the Maw and the Eye, at the same time. For you, realistically, you will kill the Maw and then the Eye in a staggered fashion. And then from here, you just rotate around the room. You get a pretty gnarly Entropic Crash here, uh, but since you're in the far corner of the room, it shouldn't do too much damage. As you can see, the boss is casting it, and there's two adds next to it. You just need to make sure the entire raid is kind of hugging the back wall to make sure they're able to survive. And right after the crash is over, you can rotate further in the room, kill this tentacle that's right next to the boss, and then pick up uh, debuffs from it to do boss damage. From here, it's pretty much uh, what you've been doing so far. Every time you kill an ad, you rotate to the next one in a clockwise fashion, because that's just going to keep the raid together and... Um, allow your healers to keep up with the high damage going out on the raid. So after the tentacle dies, uh, you will have a double add in the back. Um, I think it's a maw and an eye. You don't want to kill these at the same time. Uh, from here on, you will be pretty much staggering absolutely everything. So you'll just be killing uh, appendages one by one and picking up debuffs. Whoever can, prioritizing the bursty classes like fire mages and warlocks. Um, and then if they are debuffed and not are not able to pick up, then your melee DPS and less bursty classes who just multi-dot can also pick up. But realistically, at this point, you should be killing the boss. For us, since this was super early on, we were still dealing with adds. And as you can see, at this point, we start getting overwhelmed. So the strategy from here is basically to go into a 
um, all or nothing, kill ads, and then tunnel the boss before the boss enrages and kills everyone. So we finish off that maw, and then at this point, we still have an eye and a tentacle. Our goal is to kill those two, pick up debuffs from them, and finish off the boss. Because if we get another wave of ads and another throws, then it means that we will likely die since the boss will be enraging. As you can see at this point, we are 9 minutes into the fight and this boss enrages at 10 minutes. So the last two appendages, this eye and tentacle, are getting finished off. And as soon as they die, um, everyone who can will pick up from them. And even people who do not have debuffs will be hitting the boss because there is a way to DPS through the boss's healing. If your raid does more damage, then the boss heals back every 5 seconds, then you can still kill the boss even if you do not have the debuffs on your entire raid. For the damage portion of this guide, there are only a few things that I wanted to mention. First of all, the highest value classes you can bring for a DPS are Destro Warlocks, Shadow Priest, and to some extent Mages. Destro Warlocks will have very good overall damage on both the appendages and on the boss. Shadow Priest will bring very solid appendage damage because they can multi-dot, and Mages will bring very solid boss damage through combustion. However, the downside of this is that their damage on appendages will be typically super low because they will be using all of their cooldowns into the boss. A very important thing to understand on this boss is what your class is good at. For example, Demon Hunters are an extremely strong class at killing all the appendages, but they will not provide anywhere near as much boss damage as a class like a Fire Mage. So assigning the Void Infused Ikers around people's cooldowns is fairly important. Your tanks and your DPS should understand that the Volatile Vulnerability debuff that gets applied to appendages whenever the tank debuff pops on them increases your damage done to these appendages by 60%. So generally the biggest damage gain you can have in this encounter is to always be DPSing appendages that have the debuff. If you ever find yourself uh, DPSing an appendage without the debuff, you're doing significantly less damage and you might need to reevaluate where your tanks are dropping these debuffs or where your DPS are actually moving to and what they're hitting. You also need to keep in mind that even though 4 Ikers drop from every appendage, not all of them will be picked up and they should not be picked up. After the first uh, 2 or 3 appendages that are killed, your rage should find the perfect balance between doing boss damage and doing appendage damage without falling behind. If your raid is focusing too much on DPSing the boss, you will fall behind on appendages and you will have a new wave spawn while you still have appendages up from the previous wave. However, if you do the opposite, where you make sure you kill all the appendages, but you're not putting enough emphasis on boss damage, then you will likely hit that enrage at the 10 minute mark. For classes that primarily deal with killing all the appendages, uh, this is mostly melee DPS typically, the Reaping Flames Major Essence is super beneficial because on progression you should be able to get a Reaping Flames cast when the ad is at high health, so above 80%, and then you should also be able to get a Reaping Flames cast on it when it's at around 10% health, and then as soon as it dies, the Reaping Flames will reset, allowing you to repeat this process on every single appendage uh, in the encounter. So if you're primarily dealing with adds, uh, consider picking up that Reaping Flames as a major essence. Once the boss reaches fairly low health, on progression we consider this at around 5 million, uh, but nowadays even when the boss is at around 10 million you can do this. Your, all your DPS can target it and it DPS down the boss even if they do not have the debuffs that allows them to do uh, permanent damage to it because the boss will only heal for a certain amount every 5 seconds. If you do more damage than the boss is healing for, for that short amount of time, then you should be able to kill the boss even without debuffs on your raid. Next for the healer section. The biggest source of damage on this encounter should be from throws of agony. However, this is fairly unpredictable because it depends on when your DPS is actually killing the appendages, which then triggers throws whenever the boss reaches 100 energy. So certain classes, such as Disc Priests and Druids, won't be able to ramp, Holy Paladins may or may not have wings when throws happen, and Shamans will have a hard time timing their Cloudburst Totem. Um, 
So reactive healing classes are actually very good on this encounter because they can just press their CDs and as soon as the damage happens and then keep everyone alive during throws. If you're a proactive healing class, um, such as the ones mentioned above, you should ramp and assign CDs for entropic crashes instead of throws of agony because the entropic crashes happen on a timer and that gives you ample time to set up and have your healing completely ramped by the time the damage actually happens. And this is especially true towards the end of the encounter. At the start, Entropic Crash will deal a fairly low amount of damage to the raid, but as you get to the later waves of appendages, you will have more and more tentacles up, so Entropic Crash will deal significantly increased damage. So assigning healing cooldowns to those and damage reduction cooldowns to Entropic Crashes later on in the encounter is extremely valuable. Another thing to keep in mind is the line of sight mechanic that happens with the tentacles. Whenever DPS are inside the tentacles and a healer is away from it, you will not be able to heal those players. So it's important to always have healers move either with the raid or if a few DPS are assigned to finishing off a tentacle, then they have a healer assigned and staying with them just to help them survive, which is especially important during throws of agony. Now for the tanking section of this encounter. Tanks have one of the most important jobs on this encounter, which is debuffing the correct appendages um, to allow the DPS to kill them in a timely fashion. So whenever the Volatile Seed explodes, any player or NPC hit with that circle will take 60% increased damage. So not only is it important to make sure you hit the appendage with this seed, but it's important to avoid hitting as many players as possible, uh, ideally not hitting players with it at all. The two tanks should alternate which tank is taking a seed. Whenever a volatile seed is applied to one tank, the other one can simply taunt and generate threat on the boss until the next seed gets applied and then they taunt swap again. So every other seed should be dropped by the opposite tank. One thing that you can't underestimate on this fight is the damage that the volatile seed actually does to you whenever you drop it. And for a few tanks, such as Blood Decays, this poses a bigger threat because obviously you, whenever you're dropping the debuff, you're typically not in range of anything that you can hit to instantly heal back or to keep up your mitigation. So it's important that you either let your healers know to pay attention to you while you're dropping the debuff or you have some sort of small personal allocated to each seed drop. Another thing to keep in mind since this encounter is kind of a DPS race, Tanks should always pick up an Iker if there's any stragglers around. Not all your DPS will be constantly picking up, and there usually will be a few Ikers that are just laying around and no one's picking them up. In that case, tanks can grab them since tanks will always be hitting the boss and never actually doing damage to the appendages. The most important job of the tank on this encounter is debuffing the correct appendages for the DPS to kill them faster. You could copy exactly the debuffs that we used, however, they will depend largely on the amount of damage your raid is actually doing. The general rule of thumb is to always drop debuffs on the appendages that your raid is hitting, or if they're already debuffed, then you can drop it on the next one, but that rarely happens. Typically, you should be able to hit two appendages with each debuff. There's only a few exceptions to these, and those are usually straggling appendages that are in like the corners of the room. If your raid has fairly low DPS, each double appendage that you debuff, for example on the second wave where you have two mods spawn next to each other, will require two debuffs until they get killed and then the next debuff after that can go to the next uh, appendage and each single appendage that you kill like a tentacle will typically only require one debuff. Thank you so much for watching this video and if it helped you out please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And again, if you'd like to read our written guide, you can find it over on wowhead.com, the link to which is in the description box. Thanks to Lozi for providing the tanking information and Shampi for providing the healing information for this fight. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.